Hello, this lesson today is from section 2.3 in our statistics textbook titled Measures of Central Tendency. Now from previous sections in this chapter, you may recall we've gone over some definitions, including the difference between some, something that you look at for population versus something you look at for a sample. So remember we, we talked about if you're looking at something, a measure for a population, it's called a parameter. And if you're looking at a measure from a sample, it's called a statistic. So we're going to be looking at both of those within this type of measure. So measures of central tendency are kind of are numbers that you can look at that kind of give you an idea about the middleness of the data, where the middle is. And in fact, one of them is actually the middle. So we're going to look at these measures. These are things that you would take the data that we talked about collecting in section 2.2 that organized data that we put in a frequency distribution or in some other kind of chart or organized format. And you would take that and measures are things that you would find from those. They're numerical ways to describe the data. So um, these particular, there are lots of numbers that you can use to describe data. We're looking today in particular at measures that describe the central tendency or the middle tendency of the data. So that's a brief introduction to what we're doing today. Now, what are these measures of central tendency? Well, there are three of them. They all start with M. Okay, so our three measures of central tendency are mean, median, and mode. So we're going to look at these three measures of central tendency and see how we can compute those for a sample set of data, which I have here. So first, a lot of you probably know what the mean is. Mean is just another word for average. Okay, and median. When you think about the word median, probably the time when you use it the most frequently was, is when you're talking about the road and the median in the road. And so remember, the median in the road is always in the middle. Well, the median of a data set is the number that's in the middle, but it, it only has meaning if the numbers are in order. So this is um, the middle of an ordered set. of an ordered data set. So we're just going to define these real quick, then we're just going to look at them one at a time. And then the third measure of central tendency is the mode. Notice that this word sounds a lot like the word most. Okay, And that's what the mode is for data set. It is the number that occurs most if there is a number that occurs more than once. So. This is the data value that occurs most. So the mean is the average. And we're going to go over how to do that. Some of you, pro you probably kind of remember or know how to like average your grades. Uh, the median is the middle. And we're going to talk about how to do that when you have either an even or odd number of numbers. And then the mode is the number that occurs most. Okay, so I'm going to erase all of these but mean. And we're going to focus on that one measure of central tendency. Now we have symbols that we need to learn along the way. And for the mean, we have a symbol for population mean. That would be a parameter. And we have a symbol for a sample mean. That would be a statistic. So let's separate it like that. So population mean and sample mean. So the symbol that we use for population mean is a Greek letter. 
It looks a little bit like a cursive U when you draw it, but the actual the way we say this is mu. It's the Greek letter mu, and that represents the population mean always. So like even if you're reading an article and you see something about mu equals and it's about some data that was collected, it probably is talking about the population mean. So the population mean mu, we get just the way you would think. You take the values and you add them up. And the way we're going to demonstrate that in formula form is we're going to use the capital Greek letter sigma, which means to add up. And we're going to call each of our data values here, just on our example, they're going to be called our x sub i's. Like, the first data value like x1, x2, x3, meaning first data value, second data value, third data value, and so on. So we're going to take all those data values and add them up. That's what you do when you average your grades. And we're going to divide by the number of numbers. You've probably done this lots of times with grades. So when you're talking about a population, the number of values in the whole population, we talked about this in the last lesson, is represented by the symbol capital N. So we add up the data values and divide by the number of numbers, which in a population is capital N. Now if it's a sample, we use a different symbol. With a sample, we use the symbol X bar. That's how we pronounce that when we put a bar over it. We call it X bar. Now the formula looks very much the same for sample mean because you basically find it the same way. Is you add up the data values so the top looks exactly the same. So you add up all the x sub i's for however many you have. So you may have, here we have an x sub 1 through an x sub 10 because there's 10 data values. But you may have 100 data values. That's going to take a while to do by hand. but. Um, however many you have, you add them up. And we're still going to divide by how many, but if you're talking about a sample, the sample size is a different symbol that we use. So for the number of data values in a sample, it's a lowercase n. So let's look at this example over here and talk about how we would find either the sample or population mean. We're going to need to read the question carefully to see which one we're supposed to do. So if we look over here in this example, and this is going to be like one in your homework, they've given us two, four, six, eight, ten data values. Now, if we read the information given here, notice it says that these data values represent the number of credits being taken by a sample of ten college students for a semester. So notice this says this is a sample. When you're doing statistics problems, it's always important to notice whether you're talking about a sample or a population. We need to get used to that for the whole semester. Okay? So, so since we're doing a sample, if we wanted to find the sample mean, let's do that for this one. So this is a sample. So we're going to find the sample mean. So we're not going to do this. We're going to do x bar because we're going to do a sample mean. So to find the sample mean, x bar, first we're going to add up the data values. So I'm going to add up those data values there. You do this with me, OK? So we're going to add up these numbers. I'll say them as I'm adding them. You can add them in your calculator as well. So I'm going to find the sum of these 10 numbers. So I'm doing 12 plus 18 plus 14 plus 16 plus 16 plus 16 plus 15 plus 12 plus 13 plus 16. And I add up all those data values and I got 148. That will be my top number because that is the sum of the data values in that sample. And if you were doing this, especially on your homework or test, you know, and you kind of like to get it right the first time, then you might double check 
Uh, and, and a calculator where you can see what you've entered is really nice so that you can go up there and I'm going to double check that I've entered all these numbers correctly. Should have th that 15, 12. Okay, so I feel confident that I entered those numbers correctly. And then what I need to divide by is little n. And in this particular case, our little n is 10. There are 10 numbers. If they called this a population, we would call this capital N. And we would be using this formula, which is basically the same computation for the mean, but the symbols are different. We want to get used to using the correct symbols. That's going to be a big deal later on. So I have 148. I'm going to divide that by 10. So we would do this in our calculator, and we would get a sample mean of 14.8. Now, while we're talking about this, let's go ahead and talk about rounding these numbers. When you're rounding means, we're going to come up with a rounding rule. So I'm going to write the rounding rule for the mean right down here. You need to make note of this. The rounding rule for the mean is our default rounding rule. Of course, when you're doing your homework in my math lab, you round to whatever they tell you to so that you get the answer right. But in, in general, your default should be to round one place past the data. Now, what I mean by that is look at your data numbers. And we see that these are all whole numbers, so that the last number is in the ones place. So we're going to round one place past that. So imagine there the decimal point would be right after one of these, and then the next place would be the tenths place. So when we say round one place past the data, wherever the last digit is in the data numbers, you want to go one decimal place past that. So our rounding rule is to round one place past the data. Meaning one place further than the data goes out. So since our data is whole numbers, then we should round this to the tenths place. But notice this is already rounded one place further than this. I mean, this is the answer I got. It's already rounded one place further. I mean, the last, that eight is already in the tenths place. That means on this one, I don't need to do any rounding. But if that had gone out a second place, I would then round the number in the tenths place. So this would be my final answer. If it had come out to be 14.82, then I would have rounded it to 14.8. If it had come out to be 14.85 or bigger, if, if the second number after the decimal had been five or bigger, then I would have rounded it to 14.9. So that's an example of how to find the mean or the average of a sample data set. So I'm going to erase this, and we're going to go to the second one, the second measure of central tendency, which was the median. Now, when you're finding the median, um, it's, you need to put the numbers in order or you won't find it correctly. And in general, you should always put them in order from smallest to biggest. So I'm going to look at my numbers. It looks like the smallest number I have is 12. If any number is repeated, go ahead and repeat it. I like to put mine vertically because if you do it sideways, all the numbers kind of run together. So I'm going to do mine vertically. So I have 12, I have two 12s, and I'm going to mark these off as I write them down so I'll know I uh, accounted for all of them. And I have a 13, a 14, a 15. One, two, three, four sixteens. One, two, three, four, and an 18. 
And then I would probably, it's a good idea to count these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, remember the median is the middle number. If there is one number in the middle, that number will be the median. But when you have an even number of numbers like we have here, see, if we had nine numbers like this, I'm going to take the last one off, okay? If I had nine numbers, you'd see that this 15 would be right in the middle. I'd have four that are bigger and four that are smaller. So the median would be 15. But I have an even number of numbers. That means instead of one number in the middle, I've got two in the middle. So I'm going to find the two in the middle. So, and you can do this different ways, but these two are in the middle. This 15 and this 16 are in the middle. And so the way you're going to find the median when you have two numbers in the middle instead of one number in the middle is you're going to average them. You're going to add them and divide by two. Or another way to think of it is you're going to find the halfway point. So I'm going to do uh, 15 plus 16 and divided by two. I'm looking for the halfway point between those two numbers in the middle. So the halfway point would be 15.5 and that would be our median. Now the meaning of the median is half of the numbers are smaller than that number and half of the numbers are bigger. So in this, remember these represent the number of credits being taken by 10 college students. The meaning of this would mean that half of these students are taking fewer than 15.5 credit hours, and half of them are taking more than 15.5 credit hours. That's the meaning of the median. Remember our mean, and I should have written that down, our mean here was 14.8. That was the answer we got for the mean. And what that meant was that averaging these all together, you get 14.8. That's what they average to. This number means half the numbers are bigger than this and half the numbers are smaller than this. An average is more like um, if they were all, it all averages out, if they were all taking 14.8 hours, it would be the to total number of hours for all of them. Okay, so that's mean and we've done median. So let's make note that the median is, I'll just leave that up there. The median was, 15.5. And I'm going to leave these numbers up here like this because if you have them in order, it is especially easy to find the mode. The mode is the easiest of the three. So let's find the mode of this list of numbers. So if you recall, the mode is the number that occurs most if there is one. Now, if every number in the data set only occurs once, there's no mode. So you'd say no mode. But if some numbers occur more than once, you might have a mode. So let's see if we have any numbers that occur more than once. Here we have two 12s, so that could be a mode. And then there's only one 13, 114, 115, 118, but there are one, two, three, four, 16s. If you have the numbers in order, it's really easy to see what your mode is because you're just looking for the thing that's repeated the most. In this case, we have four 16s. That's way more than any other number. So our mode, or the most common number of hours taken by the students in this sample, and there's no symbol for mode. There's no symbol really for median either. So the mode is 16. So while the average number of hours taken is 14.8, and half of them are taking more than 15.5, and half of them are taking fewer than 15.5, but the most common number of hours that the students are taking among these 10 is 16. That's the most common course load, even though the average and the median are a little bit lower than that, but this is the most common number of hours. And that's what we mean by mode. Now, if you have two numbers that occur the same, say I'd had four 12s and four 16s, then I would have two modes. We'd call that bimodal. 
it's you there is no limit on how many modes you can have but every number can't be a mode so if they all occur once there's no mode if they all occur twice there's no mode so you can only have a mode if there's one or more that occur more than once and occur more than other numbers in the data list so those are three measures of central tendency mean median and mode mean is the average that you're used to it, kind of tells you on average what all the students are taking. Median is the middle, which tells you where the halfway point, half the numbers are bigger and half the numbers are smaller. And then mode is the number in the data list that occurs the most. So hopefully that will help you with your homework and good luck with section 2.3.